Okay, this video is going to be very quick and very bold and very direct. These are all of the ways that you reveal your SMV. Now this is something you don't want to do because here's what you have to understand. At face value, when a woman is speaking to you or dating you, or communicating with you, she's not able to gauge your status level or your popularity level instantly. What happens is through time, you end up revealing yourself to her. Now here's the problem, is if you reveal too much about yourself, you start to almost give away too much information, it lowers your perceived status, it lowers that psychological perceived status in her eyes, and now she exits. So these are the top five ways that you reveal your sexual market value, which means at all times when she's dating you, what she's really trying to do is give you different interest tests to see if you pass them, to see what league that you're in. What I'm really going to be doing here is showing you how to frame your value so that way you emulate a man of super high status or a king or a dude with a bunch of options, okay? So that's the key. So these are all of the ways that you reveal your SMV. Now here's what you have to remember. In order to have high SMV, it's almost about what you don't do instead of what you are actually doing. So if you understand what to not do, you won't make mistakes. So a lot of dating is about just understanding how to not make mistakes. If you know how to not make mistakes, that will serve you far better than trying to apply different strategies to do the right decisions. Okay, so this is all the ways you reveal your SMV. These are all the things we're getting rid of. So number one, first and foremost, the number one way that most guys reveal their SMV is wanting to see her or wanting to see a woman after you guys have slept together. Okay, here's what you have to understand. This is a big no-no. Now, this is far different from texting her afterwards to make sure like, you know, she made it home safe or something like that. Or if you say, hey, you know, it was good seeing you, um, you know, make sure to give me a call when you get home. That way I know everything's good, right? That's fine. But what I'm talking about is specifically, um, you know, you do not want to do anything where you're re-pursuing for another date or another time where you two get to meet up after you guys have already slept together. And here's why. What you have to understand is that obviously your strategy of securing options and being in your masculine needs to be paired with her being in her feminine, which equals her thinking to herself, how do I potentially lock down this relationship so that way I can secure resources, comfort, emotional care, attention, and safety from this man, okay? By you seeking her or by you seeking another opportunity to hang out with her or to meet up with her or for you guys to go out on another date after you guys have already slept together, this is going to lower your status level because what it's making it seem like is it's making it seem like you cannot necessarily generate options at her current level of attractiveness, which is why you're reaching back out. You cannot do this, okay? So this is first and foremost, this is the biggest mistake that guys make. Guys tend to think that it is their job to consistently keep pursuing without ever giving the woman an opportunity to pursue you. So you have to understand her attraction mechanisms operate on a longer time horizon. It takes her longer to build feelings than it takes you, okay? So what that means is, let's say a week goes by, two weeks goes by, and let's say she doesn't hear from you, she now wants to know what you're up to. There's a very high probability that she's going to say, hey, what are you doing? Or maybe we should get together, okay? You want her to come to you. Every time, like remember this forever, every time a woman is coming to you, it's satisfying hypergamy. Every time you are coming to her, it's not satisfying hypergamy. We need to frame your value so high that you're attracting these options and you're retaining the companions in your dating life. That's number one. Wanting to see her after you guys have already slept together. That's a big no-no, okay? This is the first way you reveal your SMV. Number two, okay? And let me let me actually follow up on this point. I'm not saying you can't see her again. You definitely can. That's how a relationship is formed or you get a girlfriend, but you want to make sure you're setting yourself up in a way where she can come to you so that way you both have some leverage in this and that way you're somebody that she is pursuing as well. So that's number one. Number two, pursuing for a relationship, okay? Here's my belief with this. Relationships are inherently feminine. If you're a man wanting, needing, or seeking a relationship in any way, shape, or form, this is not good. This is not good at all. Because she's going to get a sense that you are not stable on your own, you're needing somebody, and you're craving companionship. 
If you're craving companionship, she's gonna say, why is this guy lonely? Why is this guy not okay with being alone? Uh, why is nobody else this guy's girlfriend? Um, why doesn't this guy have other things going on in his life? Why does he need a relationship? Why does he need me? Why does he want me? Um, why isn't he focused on his natural male nature, which is developing an abundance of options? Why isn't he naturally attracting multiple women? And then she goes, well, this guy's probably not pre-selected because since he's not attracting multiple women to begin with, he's probably not worth the value of obtaining a relationship with in the first place. And then she just exits completely. So this is what you have to remember, okay? Pursuing for a relationship, you cannot do this. Um, that's number two. Number three would be needing text message communication, okay? Needing it. This is something that I see, like here's the thing, it takes a while, like it takes years of work and effort for a man to really like make himself a man. In order to really make yourself a man, you have to put in consistent work and you have to see the mistakes that you made. What I see with a lot of men who are younger is in their younger years, they're constantly needing text message communication. So it's the, hi, how are you? Hey baby, how's your day going? Hey honey, I love you so much. Hey cutie, what's up? Hey, good morning, can't wait to see you. Okay. When you're needing text message communication, what this actually signals is this is a man who is now seeking emotional reassurance. You are supposed to be the strong one. You are supposed to be the stable one. My bills don't get paid whether I get a kiss emoji on text message or not. You gotta understand, you gotta have your priorities right here, okay? Like this is just the cold hard truth you have to understand. If you need any text message communication, if you need love and affection from a woman, you have became emotionally weak. You have to be so strong and so stable on your own that you don't need any love or any care or any attention or any affection from a woman. If you need that in any way, shape or form, here's a newsflash for you. She's not going to want to give it to you. She's not going to want to give you that experience. She's not going to want to reach out and see how your day is going. She's not going to want to be there by your side. So that's what you have to understand. The second you need anything, you don't get what you desire. And that's the cold hard fact. So needing text message communication reveals your SMV. She's like, eh, you know, I thought he was an eight, a nine or a 10. He seemed like he has all these options. He seemed super high status, but now, you know, he's texting me too much. I think that he's a bit clingy. Now he seems really needy, like he's needing all this communication and now I don't want him. So that's number three. That's the third way you reveal your SMV. The whole secret to all of this is concealing your SMV because then she can't gauge it. It's like you're a mystery. So she can't necessarily gauge like how many options that you have or how many other women that are attractive that you've been with. It's like she has to kind of figure these things out for herself. So that's number three is needing text message communication. Number four, the fourth thing that reveals your SMV is excess touch that signals a need for companionship. Okay, I'm going to stress this so much. You cannot need a handhold. You cannot need snuggles in bed. You cannot need a hug and a kiss goodbye at the door. You cannot need any of this. If you need any of this, you are going weak for touch. That means if, if you're weak for touch, you know what that means? That means you're probably in a very lustful, pleasure-seeking state, and she can feel that. What we call this is we call this being thirsty, okay? How do you, how do you signal that you're thirsty? It's not just through the words that are coming out of your mouth. And it's not just through what you're saying on the cell phone, it's through the little things. It's through what, what are your eyes communicating? What are your lips communicating subconsciously? What are your, uh, how, how's your facial expression? What's that communicating, right? Hand holding, any of this stuff. Any excess need or desire for touch that signals a need for companionship, I can't help this. This is just how it works. This is gonna turn her off. The more you need any of these things, the worse it gets. And this is what you have to understand. And then that's number four. So number five, here's, here's the biggest thing that will reveal your SMV. Agreeing with everything that she says or every opinion that she has and never disagreeing with anything, never adding any kind of tension back and forth verbally that basically says, hey, I have my own worldview. I have my own world beliefs. I think that this is wrong. Basically what you're signaling subconsciously is I don't care how pretty you are. I don't care how beautiful you are. I think you're fundamentally wrong in this standpoint. I don't think that this is true. You have to act that way and you have to operate that way because a man with courage is going to actually state his beliefs and his opinions because he's not necessarily scared if it pisses her off or not due to the fact that he knows that he has options. So now she sees that you're coming from that level or that frame, she instantly goes, wow, I really want to be by this guy's side. Here's what I can tell you. 
what I've done to help guys understand this stuff and I've helped guys master, learn, and understand the language of women at an even deeper level, I created my own community, okay? And in this community, we have now put over a thousand guys together. I'm watching these guys constantly get results. They're talking about how life-changing this information is. They're communicating with each other all day. These guys are truly having fun in here. I watch these guys support each other. They're liking each other's comments. We're like having fun. So that's the thing, you need to join us. I'm doing calls in here with the guys. Like I'm watching these guys' lives actually get better. So I invite you to join us. This isn't something that's super small anymore. Like there's over a thousand guys in here. So come alongside us in this. I built a ton of cool stuff. You get to see all the different products that I made inside of the classroom. It's amazing, you'll love it. We'll see you in the next one.